Morning folks, uh, welcome to Holcomb Wall Gardens. I'm Mark, I'm the head gardener, and I'm gonna take you for a look around, introduce you to some of my colleagues, and show you some of the wonderful plants that we've got growing in the garden at the moment. Hello, I'm Kirsty. Um, you usually find me hiding out in the vegetable garden and looking after volunteers. So today I'm outside the veg garden um, and I'm going to talk about some other plants I like aside from vegetables. <laughs> um, so when I first came here, one of the things I was very pleased to see was a tree peony. Um, admittedly, it's Lutzia, the yellow variety, which doesn't float everybody's boat. Um, but nonetheless, it's a tree peony. Um, and as you can see, it's just really quite magnificent. A beautiful golden cup, which on a fine day, usually the bees will come and park themselves in there and grab lots of pollen. For me, the reason I fell in love with tree peonies was because of a house in a village in Kent called Minster. And there was a beautiful Victorian little terrace house which had a tiny garden and for some unknown reason they'd managed to coordinate their paintwork with this beautiful blue green which came with the foliage and they had a hedge of tree peony in front of the house and it was absolutely magnificent. Okay, hopefully you can't fail to notice behind me this magnificent Ceanothus. Uh, it's the next shrub I'm going to have a look at with you. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic for about the last three weeks, really, really flowering away and enjoying the lovely warm, dry April that we've just had. Um, it's against a west-facing wall, so it's getting the benefit of, of the heat late on in the afternoon. Um, and this particular specimen is only around 20 years old. I was speaking to the gentleman who planted it the other day. It was originally planted um, as a, a climbing shrub against the wall, um, just through neglect though, and, and a sort of fortunate neglect. It crept its way forward and, and broke away from its restraints. And now it's this beautiful, great big billowing um, folds of blue uh, behind me here. Gorgeous smell, um, real intense honey smell. Hello there, my name's Simon and uh, Simon Bosley and I'm garden supervisor here at Holcomb. And here we have, uh, it's, a, it's a small tree um, slash shrub again. It's Figella celeriana. It's uh, evergreen and uh, has lovely green foliage on the um, on the outside and on the reverse underside it's a nice silvery color also um, common name for this is pineapple guava so this has edible flowers that um, are supposed to taste a little bit like pineapple slash guava but they, they do taste quite nice actually um, lovely shrub and it'll grow on pretty much any aspect apart from north facing Okay, I'm down in the last section of the walled garden, um, previously known as the events room. Um, there's a big area of lawn in here, which is where we often hold uh, events and weddings and so forth. Also, it's known for having these uh, subtropical theme planted borders running around the edge. Uh, and a real sort of showstopper in here at the moment is the Echium, which is just behind me. Uh, Echium pinignana. And at the moment that's got a flower spike on it, it's got to be getting up for 10 foot tall. Uh, it's native to the Canary Islands, so sunny, well-drained soil is its favourite. Uh, you get them a lot down in the West Country. Um, obviously they have a lot more rain down there than, than we do, um, but they're often to be found, like you find Budley or in other parts of the country, uh, sort of popping up in amongst walls and, and rocks and things like that. Um, I'll just get in a little bit closer. See the flower detail there? 
closely related to uh, forage um, and it's got very similar rough hairy leaves um, and similar flowers. Um, this plant and I were introduced last year, uh, accidentally really, because a, an elderly couple consulted me about it. And uh, much to my shame, I wasn't quite sure what I was looking at. Um, but I was looking at something really stunning. And this is the Callistamon, or the bottle brush plant. And at the moment, this one is not in flower, but it's got some beautiful buds coming, which are just tipped with the pink that will come through and famously they do look like bottle brushes they're full of color often red most often pink callistamon translates as beautiful stamen which it certainly is and it's very very popular with the insects um, i've seen moths and butterflies and of course bumblebees and honeybees on these um, and it's probably going to be in flower late june july So here we have, um, it's a small tree stroke, stroke large shrub. It's Azara microphylla, um, evergreen. It'll grow pretty much anywhere you want it to grow. Final height is around about, um, about four meters and it has a spread of two and a half to three meters. Has fantastic, lovely yellow, tiny yellow flowers and for all you chocolate lovers out here, they, they have a fan, lovely scent of chocolate from February through into March and it's a really nice, I say, small tree shop. So my final choice um, has to be apple trees. Um, probably best not to get me on the subject of apple varieties because I can bore people quite well with it. Um, but at the moment I've been look, watching these trees come into blossom and they have huge blossoms this year and they are covered. Um, and they re very much remind me of a variety which I really love. Uh, we don't have them here. Um, it's a tree called a Gravenstein. It has huge flowers and produces mammoth apples, which look like gravestones, which is what Gravenstein translates as. It's a sweet and sour apple, um, comes quite early and is exceptionally delicious. Anyway, never mind, we don't have it, but what we will have, please God, is plenty of apples this year from our trees, which are, at the moment, covered in blossom. Okay, I'm just outside the walled garden now. I'm just standing next to the Samuel Wyatt Vinery behind me. And just over my shoulder, you can see this fantastic lilac. Uh, this is Syringa Charles Jolie. Um, beautiful fragrance. It's a fairly common lilac. Um, this is just a particularly nice specimen of it. Uh, this one I'm guessing is probably 30 or 40 years old. Um, it's getting a decent sight. There's a little bit of dead wood just over my shoulder there as well. But you can see at the moment, left of their own devices, they flower away um, and they really do look spectacular at this time of year. Flowers just starting to go over. But this wonderful colour and stunning. Absolutely the best fragrance in the garden. So here we have um, Amelanchia lamarchii. It's, um, it's a really nice shrub. Its final height is normally round about three meters to three and a half meters, spread of about a meter and a half to two meters. Um, early spring, it has lovely 
really lovely, almost like cherry blossom white flowers. And then growing through the summer, lovely dark green leaves, which fade into a really rich red um, coming into the autumn. And then the final piece of resistance is the fantastic red berries on it through the winter. And that's, that's what we have here, Amalanca lamarckii. Another lilac, uh, Madame Lemoine. Um, you can see Charles Jolly in the background there. Um, complete contrast in colour, beautiful pure white. Again, got the fantastic fragrance and slightly later flowering. Uh, we saw Charles Jolly is starting to go over now. This one is still in tight bud, just starting to open up. <laughs> 